Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about some different topics, two different concepts that I have covered in another video. In that video I talked about a lot of different things and I got the comment that I, I, I think you were a little bit too advanced, so you use these concepts but you never explain them really. So I wanted to rectify that and explain these topics. So what we are going to cover is CRUD and we are going to cover ORM. And these two concepts, the CRUD, which is create, read, uh, update and delete, and ORM, which is uh, object relationship mapping. These are two different concepts that you can use when you are talking to databases, usually. So let's jump over to my screen here and we can start to talk a little bit about CRUD because it's good to know about. So we have the create, read, update, delete. So that's CRUD. And if we take this, these terms and convert them over to web, then we would say that we can post something, we can get something, we can patch or put something and we can delete something. So we have the, uh, the same things here, but with different names. And if we go over to the specific case in a database, then we will insert data into a table. We will select data from a table. We can update data from a table and we can also delete ta uh, table data. So there is these kind of concepts in all kinds of programming. And if you have something that is CRUD complete, you can manipulate data in a good way. Then you can add search functionalities and, and specific functions to make it easier for you to get data. But these are the main uh, building blocks when you're talking about managing state or data. And I think I will start by actually explaining this a little bit. We had a discussion at work where they said that we need to add an ORM to our workflow to simplify our working process because we have a lot of tables and we have a lot of different state that we need to manage. And the good thing with an ORM is that you actually get these functionalities in a programmatic way, which is great if you need it. And if you can work with SQL right off the bat, you will get a lot of flexibility and you, you can do more with the language inside of the database. You can make the database more do more work for you and less in the web uh, front end. And databases are really good at doing queries, so you have a lot of strength there. So we talked a bit back and forth and this was in PHP. So we had a lot of different frameworks from different developers that we looked at. We ended up with a compromise. We said that we don't need this ORM uh, or any of those larger frameworks, but we need a query builder because sometimes it can be hard to actually build the SQL statements. And SQL statements, for instance, if we want to do a select everything star from table that that's pretty easy you get all the data but if you have let's say 100 things that you need to uh, do add parameters to this and uh, there are a lot of them that can be uh, unwieldy to work around then again writing it out in code can be very much code and hard to read that as well so there is some kind of a balance that you need to find here I think it's easier to re read SQL statements because I know that language. Some might think that it's easier to write code in order to create SQL statements. So we have different opinions about what's the easiest way to go about it. And while we did this and we talked about ORMs, that was a new concept for me. I hadn't looked at ORMs before, so I didn't really know how they worked, so I read up on it. And I wanted to create an example for myself so I can actually understand the topic better because my brain works that way. I create something, I see how it works, I fiddle with it, and then I figure out how to actually work with a specific concept. 
And so I did here as well. So uh, I created an ORM and ORM in Swedish is worm. So or urm. And a little worm in Swedish is a snook. So my <laughs> little ORM is of course called snook. And um, here we have the configuration file for this one. I wanted to do something that could work with different databases and I wanted it to be pretty configurable. So here we have some examples for a MySQL database and for a Postgres database. And I wanted to give uh, the configuration for an entity directory and then a namespace because we are working with PHP classes here. And uh, if we want to find all the entities, they need to be in the namespace to make it easy for ourselves. So this was the simple configuration that I came up with. Perhaps not the best one, but it works. Um, and after that, I needed some um, entities that I can actually work with in the database. And what I came up with was to use simple PHP classes like this. So I have a table name, that's what I save in the database. And then I have primary keys, uh, required values, and auto-incremented trees because these are things that are used in the database. So I wanted to mirror them over here and I use them as constants so they can easily be read by the main class, which is this base identity. And then I have some public properties here that I can use as well in my main entity. And then I tell you how you should create the specific instance of a class. So that's everything that I need in an entity. And of course, if we have multiple keys here, we could have something that creates both uh, two primary keys and connect them together and they can be auto-incremented as well. So this was the base that I worked around. I wanted to get something that I can create these entities and that I could work around in my uh, little uh, um, example here. And mind you, this is old code. I wrote this library six years ago, and I'm not saying that anyone should use this, but it could be a good way to understand this concept. Uh, next up, we have a generate function because I wanted to take one database and configuration of that database and then generate all the tables in an easy way. And just two lines of code, I don't think you can get it any easier than that. So I just generate all entities for all the database tables this way. And the entity generator is not that complicated either. I have a constructor here that takes the uh, input and create a database uh, if it's configured and then sets the namespace and an entity directory. And then I have a generate all that goes through the database and gets the information from an information scheme tables about the table and about the database. So I get all the information here and depending on if it's Postgres or another uh, or as MySQL or SQLite, because I support that as well, I will get the different information about the different table names here. And then I go through and generate entities for all these tables. So the code is a little bit complex here, but it's not the important part uh, to look into this code. I just wanted to show you that there is some generate functions here. So how could we actually work with these? How can we use these entities? Well, uh, I created a, a little test class here to manifest and show how to actually use these classes. And first off, I have a little bit of a setup here that I create some people, some species and some multi keys. And then I create John, Sally and Peter as people and then dog, cat and hamster as the specific species. And then I go through here and create all of these in the different tables and bind them together. So it's just a way to set up a lot of data. Uh, and then in the tear down, I just say that I don't have any database anymore. And this little function here to set up a new entity uses reflection because I wanted to uh, work with all the different uh, classes. So I could use species or I could use um, 
other uh, methods here. So I wanted some easy way to do this over and over again. Cre create an instance of a specific entity and not be able to, not require me to write all this code. In a usual way, when you have this, you don't need to write this much code uh, because when you create the entity, you have all of it in it. Uh, but in, a, in order to test it, I wanted to create something that is mockable. Uh, so you usually just create an instance of a specific class and then you can run the different functions on that. So if we have a read function here, for instance, so the first here, we create an entity of the type t uh, people. And if we look at this, one could say that this is similar to doing uh, like this, new uh, people, and then for instance, John. So that, that's an, uh, a similar way to create this if we want. But here I wanted it to set up this specific way in order to do it without the constructor so I can set information later on. And here I wanted it to just set the ID. So I haven't actually set a name for this. I just set an ID and this is a way to do a get. So I set the ID that I'm interested in the database. I do a refresh so it loads in the database from this instance and I look that it is John that is the first one in the database for people. If we uh, do want to do a commit, I have one example here. Again, I create the instance up here, not that important. We saw that we could do that in a different way. Then on that instance, I set a name and then commit. So now I haven't set an ID, but Logan will uh, auto-incrementally get an ID for this. So that's the way a worm works. It's actually, or an ORM works. It's taking some information that you set into a class and then run some logic in order to create that state in the database. And next up, so I create the second instance of this reflection class here. And I set, check that both of these are null and I get the ID of the first one and do a refresh in order to see that I actually get Logan out as a name for that newly created identity. And it goes on like this. If we look at an update statement here, we see that we set name Chris first and then set Annie and I do a commit after each other. And the instance here gets an ID up here with Chris and then I replace that uh, ID, uh, that specific instance with Annie because now it has an ID. And I will check down here that that is the name Annie if I do a refresh on that. And then I will uh, commit Felicia, Felicia and then refresh that and see that the old instance here has Felicia. So the, this is a specific other instance of the same class, but it has the same ID. So that makes it possible for me to refresh and see that the old ID uh, updates as well, if I refresh it. Uh, last one we will look at here, uh, then this is just a delete. So if I create Shannon down here, I do an, uh, I set that in instance up and commit it and create a new instance, give it an ID and then run delete then I should not be able to refresh the first instance because that object should not be found anymore. These are interesting test classes, but I think it's a simple way to explain how a CRUD could work in an ORM setting. Uh, perhaps we should look into some of the code as well. I will not look through the full implementation of this because there is a lot of uh, uh, code in this base identity, but we could look at one of the uh, functions here. For instance, commit. So we, in this case here, I will check first that all primary keys are correct. And I will check if the primary key here is set to auto increment. And if it's not, then I will tell that the primary key should be auto incremented. So I get give you a, a little bit of a and information up there. And then I will bind all the properties 
I will get uh, the statement for an insert. So this is um, the statement that tells us how to insert so stuff into the database. I wonder if I have uh, insert statement I have up here. I wonder where I actually saved all of those. I haven't looked at this code for ever so i don't really remember where all of these kind of configuration is set hmm do i create them up here yeah up here we have the select statement for instance so what we're looking at now is the insert statement here and it's just insert into table name and then down here we add some parameters to that all the property names and then we have the values as the last uh, step down here. So in the, in the constructor here, we will create all these statements. Uh, so I will go through here and get the uh, status sta uh, statement here in order to see if the object is available. And then I look if it's a Postgres driver, then I need to do in it, it in a different way. So, so there is a lot of uh, specific code for handling the database, but in <laughs> with all of this code, I actually do pretty much an insert um, into table name and then some properties and the values, let's say, John. So that's what I'm creating here. Uh, so there is no real magic in what's done. It's just a lot of work to read all the properties, create a statement that should be run, check if it's a new, st uh, new field or an old field in the database, and if it's not available, I will in auto increment and create a new entity and set the values to that new entity. Otherwise, I will update an old entity and so on. So there is not that much magic to this code. It's just a lot of fiddly bits. And down here, I have two interesting um, functions, one to object and one from object, because perhaps you want to have a standard uh, instantiation without any of this database stuff. You want to have this object and push it through to, for instance, a JSON parser or encoder or something like that because you want to send it over to over the internet or something. And then you don't want the, all the extra things, you just want the properties set. So I can create a standard class here with all the properties set. And if I like, I can go the other way around and create an uh, object where I set all the values from a standard object into uh, this instance that we created here in order to save it to a database. So there is a lot of interesting um, parts into this code that I wrote six years ago and I have forgotten most of how it worked and, and what was written but I can at least uh, think about it and figure out pretty much what I was thinking when I wrote this code. I know that this code is tested. This is one of these uh, things that I wrote that was so over-engineered that it isn't even funny. It has full test coverage and it's very interesting, but I think I understood the concept at least fully. So an ORM, the only thing it does is take standard clauses and then annotates them in some way or uses some kind of way to inform the system that this entity should be saved in a specific way and then map that to a database. Or, and the other way around, if you have a database, you can map that to specific en entities that you use in your code in order to do updates and reloads. And a larger ORM has a lot of functionalities for different uh, uh, references between tables and so on. And 
the possibility to g do really complex uh, SQL statements that will return a data structure with a lot of objects in it, but this simple ORM, this snook, does not have that much functionality. It just proves the specific concepts of CRUD. Create, read, update, delete. So I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave those down in the comment section down below. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues, and I really hope to see you in the next video.